Here we go then, big episode today, a win in our fixture against Mali and we're taking you to a FIFA World Cup Finals. So let's kick off with our form since the last episode and it has been good after that 3-0 victory, which to be honest, I was a little bit surprised by in the last episode. I thought Mali might give us a little bit more of a test. We were the home team, we're going to be away from home against the same opposition today, but that 3-0 win was encouraging. And in our next two games, we were just as strong. I was nervous going into the game against Benin because that was against our former employers. But we were emphatic in this fixture. We took the lead early on when Datra Fafana converted a penalty. We then scored a screamer from distance and from a long throw, no less, as Ibrahim Sangara got his first goal since being recalled to the national team. Afana then got his second of the game, his fourth in the last two fixtures, before another set piece led to a free kick that hit the bar, and Mark Gay was unmarked and on hand to tap home our fourth. And so we strolled into the next fixture against arguably the weakest team in the group. We won it 3-0, another clean sheet, our third in three games, and what looks like a pretty convincing scoreline. This one was a little bit more nervy, however. We took the lead again fairly early in this game. This time it was Ahmed Diallo in the 19th minute, putting us in the lead. But then for a long time, the game was poised at 1-0 and we were looking a little bit vulnerable to some counter-attacks. So we really needed the second goal and it was provided by Sinali Diamande in the 66th minute. And from then, we never looked back. Another Diamande, Mohamed this time, stepped up to convert a 70th minute penalty and that made it three wins in three games in our World Cup qualifiers and we haven't conceded a goal yet. But of course, whilst we were playing our fixtures, Mali were in action as well in their game against the Central African Republic. Whilst we were playing Benin, there was a little bit of hope. The Central African Republic took the lead early, but then Mali came storming back into the game. They scored through Yves Basuma. They then scored again through Samaseko. He added a third just before the halftime break. And then Seko Koita, a really good striker, one we're going to have to watch out for today. He's worth a lot of money and he's playing for Bournemouth in the Premier League. Well, he got the fourth goal for them. But in their next game, they played our friends Benin and they were 1-0 down in this game. It was a little through ball by one of our former favourites, Angelo Chibuzzo, that put Benin into the lead. But Bissouma again dragged them back into the game, equalising for them. But it wasn't until the 85th minute that Marley managed to score the winning goal, a goal that means the group will be decided on the final day of qualification. So here's how the table stands. We've edged ahead with that win against Mali in our last episode, and we've kept it up by beating Benin and the Central African Republic. A draw is going to be good enough for us today. Let's explain how qualification is going to work, because we did misinterpret it in our last episode. We are now in an era in 2030 where more than 800 nations all qualify for the World Cup and Africa has nine qualification berths. It means that the winners of this group do not progress to a playoff against a winner of another group. Instead, they progress directly to the FIFA finals. So if we come top of the group, we are home, we are hosed, we are going to Spain 2030. But if we do lose today, hope is not lost because the three best second place teams from the six groups will also qualify as well. So even a defeat might mean that we're nervously checking out this second place table come the end of the game. Hopefully it won't come to that. We just need a draw, a point, and we're recording our World Cup single. So our lineup has a pretty consistent look about it now. We're going to be playing the same 11 players at the start of the match that we played in the last episode when we were home against Mali. And the two players that we've brought into central midfield who were not even in the squad when we took on Uruguay in a friendly in our first fixture in charge of the Ivory Coast, well, they've both been really good. Angelo Fulgini has been useful from set pieces and has also been a really good player at knitting the play together in our central midfield. And alongside him, Ibrahim Sangari has been a pretty dynamic influence. Lots of lung-busting runs, a goal and an assist in the game against Benin. He's averaged above a seven in the three games that he's played since we brought him back into the squad. So he has been really useful as well. And he's also a key player because he's playing regular football at a top-flight club with PSV in the Eredivisie. 
and it's good to have a player that is playing regularly. Not all of our players are first team regulars, even though they're strong enough to start for us. But there is good news on the keeping front. A couple of people in the comments were a little bit concerned that Nicholas T had only played about three games of first team football with Santa Clara over the last three seasons. Well, he's dropped down a division in Portugal, but he is now starting games. He's not playing particularly well, but he's made seven appearances for Forense in the Portuguese second tier this season. That's got to be better than sitting on the bench and never getting to play a game when he was at Santa Clara, I would guess. The only slight issue we seem to have with this system is with our star man. This is Hamed Traore, who's rated by the coaches as a four and a half star player, along with Wilfred Singo. That is our best rating, according to our coaches. But we haven't been able to get a performance out of this young man yet. We've been playing him in central midfield against Uruguay no good at all. We're now playing him in his more favoured number 10 slot, and we've not been able to get him to perform at above a seven in any of the last three games. We've played him as a track artista. That did not seem to work. We then tried him as an attacking midfielder. That seemed to make things worse. So today, we're going to go against my instincts, and we're going to play him as an advanced playmaker. What do I have against playing advanced playmakers? Absolutely nothing. What I'm not so keen on is having two playmakers in the same midfield. I prefer to have one focal point that the play will go through. This might confuse the players that we've got a brace of playmakers. Well, that could be my neuroses coming into play. It's not ideal, I don't think, but we're going to try and play it today in order to get a performance from our best player because we're going to step out there against Marley today and it's not going to be as easy as it was in the home leg. We're going to have a full away stadium that are going to be cheering on the opposition. We know that a point will be enough to take us to the World Cup. Let's get out there and see how we do. We are underway. This is the biggest of games that we've had as Ivory Coast. The good news is some fans have actually turned up to watch it. Nobody came when we played the return leg in Mali, but we've got a pretty packed arena for today's game. Things have been going so well in the last three games. I am cautious about today. It feels like there could be a sting in the tail. Against Mali in the last encounter, we looked so strong. We've made a good start to this game, hitting the woodwork early on. But this does feel like it could be the kind of game where we might slip up. Hopefully not. We've sent an early corner in. Kasunu has risen. The Borussia Dortmund midfielder. We've reached the 18-minute mark. We have thrown a header directly to the opposition. Luckily, we've got the ball back. And here's Zingo raiding. A little probing run. We've got the ball falling to us on the edge of the six-yard box. A smart stop was needed. By the Marley keeper. We've had nine shots. Marley haven't registered a single effort yet, but we've got to the 32 minute mark and it's still tied at goalless. Singo again doing more good work down the right. His delivery wasn't great on that occasion, but he's got the ball again. He slipped it through to Datro. We're inside the box. Singo has an effort this time. That was a little disappointing. We're looking at going into the break goalless now, unless we can find a little breakthrough. We've got about seven minutes left. Here's our left back, Naka. He's got it back to Fulgini and now Triore. It's patient. It's probing. Here's Naka. Can he deliver something useful into the box? He can't. He's gone all the way back and we're just maneuvering the ball around on the edge of their area without really looking like creating a chance. Here's Sangari again. He's marshaled by two players. Kasunu has a long-range effort. We are struggling to get close to the Mali goal. 12 shots, three on target. Nothing yet for Mali. There's their first effort of the game. A draw is going to be enough, but it's pretty finely poised. I think we best tell the players we're going to need a bit more from them in the second period. So our pre-match team talk didn't elicit much of a response from the players. One was motivated, the rest unmoved. We've just told them at half time we're a little disappointed with their first half performance and we've motivated the entire starting 11. So hopefully that might just kick start their performance because we need to try and create a clearer opportunity, a real sight of the opposition goal rather than these speculative efforts that we've had so far. We're on 46 minutes. We've got the ball through Triore, who feeds it to Singo. Our fullbacks have been heavily involved. But Singo is dispossessed, I'm afraid. And now it's Marley that come forward. Mark Gaye tidies up for us. Singo's going to have another go. He's quick. 
He plays a ball forward. Datro's in. And Datro, if he's onside, has put us one foot into Spain 2030. The linesman doesn't seem to be interested. I guess there were some appeals from Mali. They've fallen on deaf ears. Singo, rather than break forward and cross, has played a deeper ball. Datro has rolled his marker. He's tucked one past Diawara. He's going to be disappointed to be beaten so easily, but it means that we have got the all-important breakthrough. On 60 minutes, I think we're going to freshen things up a little bit. We're looking in control, but I don't want tired legs to start making mistakes. Ibrahim Sangari does often struggle to see out a full 90 minutes. We're going to bring on Abui Kouassi in place of him. And one of our strikers is having a quiet game as well. Ahmad Diallo's on a 6.7. I think we're going to change him out for Shaka Traore, who's 24 years old. He must have been about nine when we started our mercenary career. We're going to bring him in for a game up front. We've got 30 minutes left to navigate. Let's see if we can get ourselves a second goal that will cement our place in these World Cup finals. We've got the ball on our own back line now. Fulgini plays it back to Diamande into the midfield. Are we tentatively going to say that Troy always been a little bit more involved as a playmaker? Here's the substitute that we bought on, by the way. Shaka has an effort. Their keeper has tipped it wide. We've got a corner. Fulgini should be on it. He's going to swing in a deep one. We can't win the ball. It's been headed clear, but we are still looking eager to get this second goal. We've got 15 minutes left till the end of the game, and we've got some worrying performances in our back line. For some reason, Sinali Diamande, even though we're keeping a clean sheet, is on a 6.4 average rating. Wilfred Singo is looking tired, even though he's playing well. And we've got a bit of a dilemma. Do we take off the poor performance or do we take off the tired legs? On this occasion, I'm going to go with the poor performance. And we're going to bring on Jonathan Panzo, not as a left back where we've played him previously, but as a left footed centre half to see if he can marshal us all the way to the 90 minute mark. We still haven't seen much from Marley. Two shots, none of them on target. And with just over 10 minutes left, we just need to shut this game down. We're approaching the final few minutes of the game. We've thrown on a little bit of time wasting. We're also playing for set pieces now. Otherwise, our tactic remains unaltered. We're still on a positive mentality. Marley have the ball. We're about to hit the 90-minute mark. Our defence clear it out for a corner. That was a bit of a rash clearance, but I guess it removed the danger for the moment. And now we've got to see out this set piece. They flicked a header. I'm not sure that was ever really troubling Nicholas T in goal. And now we're into stoppage time. We're approaching 93 minutes. We've got the ball. We've sent a deep cross into their box. Singo, probably running on empty now, has got the ball. Can he muster up enough energy to get it into the box? He's on it now. He's played a through ball back. Oh, it's bobbled. It's pinballed. It's bounced around their box. I'm not sure the chance is over yet. Maybe it's actually going to be a counter-attacking chance for Marley. They've threaded the ball through and they have got men over. Our left back is AWOL. I think Mark Gay has come to try and close down the play. Idara has one of the most wayward efforts I think I've seen. In fact, another Marley chance seems to go in the wrong direction. And that should be enough to see us over the line. We've got seconds left. Gay in absolutely no rush to play the ball forward. Panzo. Panzo's wastefully just spanked one down the line, but that is going to be enough for us. We've kept our fourth clean sheet in four games that we've been in charge of these World Cup qualifiers. We're going to show you the table. This is going to be enough to send us to the World Cup. And so in the end, it almost looks comfortable. We finished on 16 points, four clear of Mali. This means that we can go and get our World Cup suits fitted. And most importantly, we can order our edition of the Spain 2030 Panini sticker album. Join us for our next episode where we will be tearing open packets of Panini stickers and seeing who makes our 23-man World Cup squad, as well as playing our first game at Spain 2030. Whilst you wait for that episode, why not check out this one next? You never know, it might just inspire you to start your next game of FM22.